And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds for the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship. The referee for this bout, working in a world title bout for the 37th time, is Mills Lane. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks and weighing in at an even 140 pounds. Originally from Spanish Harlem, now living and training and fighting out of Big Cypress Indian Reservation in Florida with a professional record of 34 and 0, 17 KOs. He's a two-time world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Macho Man, Hector Macho Camacho. Wearing the red trunks with green trim, he weighs an even 139 pounds. From Youngstown, Ohio, 29 victories, 23 by KO against only three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the former lightweight champion of the world, Ray Boom Boom Mancini! Any question, Mr. Mantini, she's second. Let's get it over, come on. The final instructions from veteran referee Mills Lane. And ladies and gentlemen, finally, Ray Mancini and Hector Camacho in the ring, face to face. Both of them are loosened up and they've both broken a sweat. This fight's gonna heat up quickly. The strategy, both have played this fight over and over in their minds for the last five, six years. And it has not changed from five, six years ago to tonight. Mancini wants to come straight forward at Camacho. He's looking for his left. And Mancini has to cut off the ring on Camacho. He cannot allow Camacho to dance around in circles. This is a big ring, so he's going to have to step way over. Camacho and Mancini. Mancini who threw about 110 punches around, and Camacho says, well, he'll be throwing in air. He wants to show him a lot of movement. And as we go along, Sean, you take a look at both fighters. Tell me a little bit about the rust that Mancini's trying to take off, and tell me where Camacho is compared to his last few fights. Mancini, first fight in four years. Remember, Camacho has only fought about five times in, in the last three and a half years, so he also has a little bit of the rust. Mancini has a lot of ring rust, however, not as much as usual because, let's face it, he's still a young man. He's celebrating his 28th birthday Saturday. Remember, Mancini, the champion at the age of 21, retired at the tender age of 23. Macho Camacho, also a champ at 21, holds two titles, super featherweight and the lightweight title. This is a feeling out process. Mancini has got Lenny on the front of his trunks. Lenny, of course, his father. Well documented story, winning the lightweight championship, beating Arturo Frias in 1982, but he says, this one is for me. I want Camacho. I've waited long enough for this one. A very serious look on the face of Macho Camacho, who takes a right. Both of their faces are very serious. For Mancini, I expect him to go to the body in his first few rounds. Good straight left hand by Hector Camacho. To the disadvantage of Mancini, the size of this ring. At least 20 feet, we measured it closer to 21. And also, the pounding that he has taken in the past. The ability to cut. Call it ability, but the tendency to cut on Mancini's part. And you know, Camacho is just going to look to get in, get out, and work to the face. And Mancini does have some redness around the outside orbital of the right eye from uh, training. And it'll just take a little while to let it set in. But these two fighters are finally in the ring. This isn't a video computer fight. They are matched up face to face, nose to nose. And now they're heating it up. Macho actually 
Staying away here, Mancini, who has him in the corner. Camacho scores with the right, and then spins away nicely. And Camacho, that's the way he wants to fight. That's why he came in with the bull, the bull out there. Oh, Camacho is caught by a left. Stare down at the end of the first round. Mancini says, fighting the southpaw in Camacho, then when Camacho throws the left, he feels this fight will be ended on a Mancini left hook over the left of Camacho. He could be very true. Look in the corner of Ray Mancini. Murphy Griffin is talking to him right now. He's inside the ropes. This is what he says. Okay? Hook inside when you pull. You're hooking too far out and he's leaning over with the right and the left hand. Okay? Okay. All right. And the corner of Hector Macho Camacho steps up. Get ready for the second round. Mancini still sitting down in his stool, trying to get every second of rest between the rounds. No tune-up after four years off for Mancini. Goes right in to the ring against Camacho. Round number two. Griffith told Mancini, hook inside. Pressure is good. He's got good pressure on Mancini. Throw the right hand to the body. The way southpaws fight, a right hand to the body is a natural because they run into it. Mancini says he wants to throw punches from bell to bell. Take away the legs of Camacho. Keep on him on defense. Try to break his will. And I tell you, it's going to be hard to catch Hector Camacho upstairs clean. But he needs to do is go down to the body first like he did right there. A straight right hand to the body. Camacho thinks that Mancini's style made to order. He feels his size is easy to maneuver. Either counter or get out of the way, but that's Camacho four years ago. And we're going to see here tonight how close he is to have returned to that era. And he was one of the greats. And this is just the way Hector Camacho wants to fight. He wants to keep moving, keep on the run, keep away from, from uh, Ray Mancini. If they get inside, Camacho clinches. Let's the referee break him up. Camacho now moving more in the second round, up on his toes, keeping the distance from Mancini. Mancini straight on. You know his strategy. And look at that movement from Camacho. Now what Mancini has to do to kill that movement, take the legs out, out from under Hector Camacho by going downstairs to the body. Mancini actually thinks that Camacho is a better fighter now. He thinks he's more complete before, you know, he give you all that flash. They made a lot of mistakes, taking a lot of chances because of his great speed. He says now he feels, watching the tapes of Camacho's last fights, that he's settled down. He picks his shot better. Camacho keeping his distance, looking in for his shots. Right there, Ray cut off the ring. Hector Camacho. He just told it to either his right or his left, whichever uh, Camacho's going. Mancini has Camacho on the ropes, but Camacho is straight right to get away. Camacho knows that ring. And again slips away from a barrage from Mancini. There's the time remaining in round two. It is scheduled for 12 for the WBO Junior Welterweight title. And this could be uh, just the start of some classic confrontations. Oh, and this crowd don't like Hector Camacho fighting uh, and running. Camacho holding. He gets well, a warning. Ahead of Mancini. And gets a warning from uh, referee Mills Lane. When this fight was put together, many of the experts felt there was a joke with Mancini coming out of four-year layoff and four-year retirement. And Camacho in his last few fights not dedicated to the fight game and slipping. But these two enemies are actually best of friends because they have made one another focus in the ring once again and perhaps making one another better. He loves it not having the crowd with him. Well, he is working the crowd, trying to his advantage. Look like two against one right there. Camacho taking his eye off Mancini. Third round action. Mancini now looking to pick up the pace. He goes right after Macho Camacho. Now Camacho cannot lose that concentration of his game plan. He's got to be like the, like the matador against the bull. He's got to keep moving. If he sets down and loses concentration one second, Mancini will nail and this fight could be over. The chant of boom boom for Mancini. 
Camacho, 34 and 0, 17 knockouts. Mancini, a record of 29 and 3. His three losses, twice to Livingstone Bramble, once to Alexis Arguello. That's the only fight he was down. 23 knockouts for Mancini, 17 of them within the first three rounds, and we're in round number three. Camacho down once last June in the first round to Reyes Cruz. And Mancini uh, also down early against Arturo Frias and came around and knocked Frias uh, out to win the title in 82. So two fights that Mancini has been down. Here's something that could play a factor. Hector Camacho has been training in Lake Tahoe, some 60 miles up the road. 6,500 feet altitude. Now he's coming down to... Reno, where it's 4,500 feet altitude. He, he should have more wind because of that. In comparison, Ray Mancini has been training in Las Vegas at 3,000 uh, feet altitude. He's moving up to 4,500. Can you make a judgment as far as the rust we were talking about that Ray Mancini had to work through in the opening rounds? Well, Ray Mancini has missed a lot of shots in these first several rounds. However, that's Ray Mancini. He missed a lot of shots when, when you know, four years ago. He throws a lot of punches. He misses some. The more you throw, the more you're going to land. And uh, Hector Camacho is extremely elusive. Very difficult to hit him and get a, a clean shot on him. So far, is this a better Camacho than you have seen the last uh, couple of years? It looks like he's now the Camacho of old. This is the Camacho that, uh, that, that we all got excited about, the movement. Look at that. Out of that corner. Look, beautiful spinning outside that corner. He was trapped in there and he worked his way out. And he gets out again. Mancini encouraged when he saw Camacho go down for the first time in his career in fight number 33 against Cruz last June. And here is Mancini trying to track down the elusive Macho Man. And that is the end of round number three. The danger zone for opponents of Mancini in the past. Between rounds, Murphy Griffith telling Ray Mancini, right hand, left hook. Against southpaws, you're taught to throw the right hand and the left hand. Because of the way their stance is, they are many times vulnerable to those punches. The Good parents strategy. of Mancini, very supportive now that he has decided to get back in the ring. But when he ended it right here in this ring four years ago after a war with Livingstone Bramble, Lenny and Ellen were very happy that the Boomer had decided to call it a career. They felt that he had enough. Camacho felt that at that time Mancini was shot. And here it is four years later, and we are into the fourth round. Many experts didn't feel this fight would still be going on. Camacho around a three-to-one favorite to win this one. And Camacho again back on his bicycle. Mancini pressing this fight. So elusive is Nacho Camacho. He's bending underneath those punches. And there he saw he could not get out of the corner, so held effectively. Fighting a smart fight is uh, Hector Camacho. This is the way he knows how to fight, and he loves to fight. Said he was mad at Ray because of a uh, special on television that his son saw, where Ray said that he was not a good role model for the kids. Well, this is Hector, Hector got very mad about that and said he was going to punish Ray because of that. Certainly has uh, been set up as the hero versus the villain. Hector Camacho says uh, that his life has changed. No more tax problems, no family problems, facing no court cases. He's built a house in Florida. There's no desire to hang around discos any, anymore. Says his mother crashed a car recently, bought her a new car. He is taking care of business. And John Villarreal in the corner of, of uh, Hector Camacho said, I've never seen Hector work this hard. As Mancini lands a good right hand. Both good for one another. They both mean dollars for one another. And they are both putting one another back in the spotlight. Macho Camacho getting roughly a million and a half for this fight. Mancini with incentives and bonuses, which should be around the million mark. Mancini says he turned down a $2 million fight in Canada against Barry McGuigan in McGuigan's comeback. 
Turned down seven title fights. He wanted only this one. Burning desire to finally get in the ring with Camacho. And Murphy Griffith in his corner. Struggle by Camacho. Was he, was he set? Now Camacho staying away. Was he nailed by Mancini? Did Mancini get one of Mancini coming in with the elbow? And another good right hand by Mancini. Camacho is standing flat-footed more. He is hurt. Tries to hold on. Mancini has caught Camacho here in round four. And just for a second here, he has lost that concentration that I was talking about in the last round. Catches it now. Nice little flurry by Camacho to get out of this fourth round. He is holding, waiting for the bell. And waiting for referee Mills Lane to break him up. The crowd responds to their favor here in Reno. Mills Lane, the referee, brings the two into the middle of the ring. Very anxious. Mancini comes out to start round number five. Shakes up Camacho in the fourth. And now Mancini putting some pressure, chasing Camacho, backing up. He's got Camacho where he wants him. And Camacho again showing the skills. He looks at it as a skilled fighter against an unskilled fighter. Ooh. Mancini is loosening up. Big left hooks by Mancini, and that's his best punch. Mancini, a converted southpaw himself, has power in that left hand. And Camacho glanced a worried look into his corner. Four years ago, this was to be one of the boxing classics. And now four years later, we figured both fighters still with the hatred for one another, perhaps on a different level, but a competitive fight. It has been a competitive fight through this, the fifth round. And uh, perhaps the level a little higher than we had anticipated. Another big left hook by, by Mancini. It appears as though Camacho is just trying to last through these rounds. Again, spinning uh, Mancini out away from him. Not trying to get into confrontations with Mancini, and here he comes again. A left from Mancini scored. Rattling the blonde curl of Hector Macho Camacho. There's the time in round five. Al Albert with Sean O'Grady and Michael Marley in Reno, Nevada. Now this is the way, this is the way that uh, Camacho is not supposed to be fighting in this fight. He's not he's standing too flat footed in these last two rounds. And we may be detecting some blood now from the right eye of Mancini, and this is one of the keys to this fight. Mancini, who has certainly cut in the past, he has taken some beatings to the face, and Camacho certainly looking to do a dissection job on the face of Mancini. And the longer this goes, hoping that perhaps he can conclude this one on cuts. Big left! Camacho teeing off! A good one-two combination by Macho, and he got out of the way before any retaliation. Crowd didn't appreciate Camacho turning sideways on Mancini. Mancini will be seeing all the angles from Macho Camacho. Ten seconds left in round number five. Scheduled for 12. What do you do when a guy holds you like that? You hit him underneath those ribs, on both sides, underneath the arms, on those ribs. They're putting cut right medicine up yeah. over that then left eye. Okay. I believe there's a cut up there. I saw him applying some, uh, some Avatine up there. I know there's redness. I don't know if there's a cut. There's also redness underneath that left eye. And that's been as a result of the right jab of Hector Camacho. Look at him using that jab, and then he moves around. Now, the way that... Oh. And an exchange to start the sixth round. Camacho mixing it up. Mancini loves it. It's exactly what he wants Camacho to do with it. Last fight for Mancini right here. A war 
against Livingstone Bramble. 15 rounds. His final fight before the four-year layoff. His last win right here, five years ago. Fifth round knockout over Bobby Chappelle. That was his fourth and final defense of the lightweight title. Big sweeping right hand by Ray Mancini. That's the same kind of punch that Reyes Cruz landed on Camacho and knocked him down. He's bringing that right hand from the outside. There it is again, from the outside. Trying to sweep around with that right hand. And plus, that sweeping right hand. Camacho is moving to his left, so he would run into it to the sweeping right hand of Mancini. Which makes a little bit more power. This fight criticized by the critics when it was put together. So with that in mind, Sean, I think it has already passed expectations. It is a very exciting fight. And now Camacho blinking with the right eye. Was he thumbed? He could have thought it cut a thumb in there or a knuckle. These guys are fighting by right right Mancini. Camacho buckles, holds on, looks to his corner. Clean, here we go. Now holding uh, the referee, Mills Lane. These guys are fighting with the thumb tied gloves. When your thumb is tied down to your fist. Oh, oh Mancini takes the left, swept in by Camacho. Camacho is now all business. The flash is gone. He has seen enough of Mancini. And he is showing signs of the Camacho of old. Hector Camacho, this is the way he wants to fight and he needs to fight. And in the pickers shots, looking to wear Mancini down. And he thought Mancini would do easier pickings than this. Very fast hands of Hector Camacho and Ray Mancini, here he comes. Now the judges must give points for aggressiveness. There would be no fight if he didn't. Big right hand by Mancini. And another one. If it works, keep using it. He closes the sixth round in a hurry. Just, just, just stay on him. Don't give him, don't give him a chance to breathe. Go. Kill that body, okay? Kill that body. Kill that body, stay on him, and don't give him a chance to breathe. Good instruction. Mancini. Runs out for the start of the seventh round. Six rounds down, possibly six to go. How you scored so far? I've got it very close. Camacho has been uh, very skillful in his movements. Uh, they give Mancini, him the edge right Mancini, now after six. Yeah, I think so. But Mancini, keep, as he keeps pressing this fight, some of these judges are going to give him points for the aggressiveness, as I talked about in the last round. Seventh round action. Mancini again, pressure, pressure, pressure. That's what they told him between rounds. Keep hitting the body and keep the pressure on your opponent. Camacho can't keep him off of it. And a good right hand by Mancini. And Camacho returns and returns again. Mancini steps inside. One of the biggest assets that Mancini has had in the past has been his ability to punch in combinations. In training, I noticed he was not punching in combinations. And in this fight, he is not punching in combinations. And fighters do in the ring what they practice in the gym. He's, he's landing the one shot. He's landing the cleanup shot, but he's not taking uh, Camacho out with the combination. Camacho keeping his distance. In training for this fight, worked a little more on weights to build up his upper body, figuring that he really would have to be pushing Mancini off quite a bit tonight. Now Camacho, on the other hand, is getting the angles on his opponent, but he's not making, him, making Ray Mancini pay for it. He spins Mancini around, and then he runs away from Mancini. Instead of punching uh, Mancini when he's got the angle on him. If you can get your, ang your angle on your opponent, you've uh, got the upper hand. Oh, you have the fist, I guess I should say. Come on, let's get back. Here we go, come on. Come 
can see him following Camacho around too much. Step over and cut the ring off. He's staying right at the wrong distance, too. Camacho wants to leave him out there on the end of those punches. What Mancini needs to do is get all the way in or all the way out. Ooh, the two, the two clashed heads. Right by Mancini. He has Camacho in the corner, and Macho holds on. And Mancini held on, too. Mancini held on in there. He may be feeling the effects of that four-year layoff. Two. Round number seven. Scheduled for 12. Under 10 seconds. Mancini has come on the final seconds the last couple of rounds. Again, one punch. No combinations from Mancini. Hector Macho Camacho taking his time getting back to his corner. He uses an awful lot of energy. But he's got a lot of energy. Packed house at the Lawler Event Center, Reno, Nevada. 11,700 strong. An historic moment in boxing, finally, after years upon years and the feud continuing. Camacho and Mancini meeting in the ring, and they go into the eighth round. And again, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel here. You can see the 12 rounds down in the distance. It's not that far, so now Mancini must turn the heat up. has been in and out. He's been using his defensive skills. He felt very confident he could maneuver Mancini around. Mancini, though, on one occasion, shaking Camacho. Popular opinion never felt that Mancini doubted him after the four-year layoff, figuring that he had had enough of the wars in his career, ending with the Bramble fight four years ago. Never felt that he would be able to extend this fight. And here we are in the eighth round, and Mancini still stalking Camacho. I think Camacho's skills, though, might have him in front as they enter here in the eighth round. What's the matador against the ball? But depending on who was who could do, make the other guy do what. And there, right there, Camacho is fighting Mancini's fight. Mancini looking to wind up. Mancini mixing his punches up too. He's going downstairs and then he goes upstairs. Hits the body and the head. Remember, Mancini says he'll end this one with a left hook, although his best punch so far tonight was a right. Here is a right. Now, I'll show you a secret. See the, the two tying up. Okay, now, if Mancini starts hitting the ribs of Hector Camacho underneath that arm, Camacho's not going to be tying up long. Right there he is. Look at that left hand. Now, pound that rib. The left hand is there. Ray Mancini held on as much as Hector Camacho. Camacho tonight with uh, R-rated uh, trunks. Mancini doing a great job keeping the pressure on, just like his corner man Mur Murphy Griffith told him. In and out, Camacho. He said he was going to cut Mancini up in this one. And that has been his strategy. The strategy is the same tonight, Sean, as if they met four years ago. That's right, Mancini showing the effects of... Uh, those quick, lightning-fast punches from uh, Hector Camacho. His eyes are starting to swell. He's got, it's either a cut or a small abrasion over the left eye. So there have been the bursts of Camacho that have been the difference. Under 15 seconds left in round number eight. Bang, 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 Camacho landing with a combination. And Mancini right on top of him, closing seconds of the year. And he wisely ties up for no retaliation. Great round for Hector Macho Camacho. Now both eyes, you can see the punishment that he's taken. His nose is swelled up. Both eyes are showing the effects of those punches. Here's a look at some of that action from that eighth round. Mancini with Camacho's back to the rope. Camacho scoring heavily and moving out of the way. Tying up. Now here's a look at this exciting combination. Here's a, here's a spurt of that, of that lightning fast speed that we saw from the old Hector Camacho. Rapid fire for the Macho Man. 
And that basically is scene he visualized for this fight. Round number nine, it is scheduled for 12. How many out there thought that this would go the distance? Raise your hands. Four rounds for the, to the final bell. And again, Ray Mancini, the same story as since the first round. Ray Mancini pressing this fight. And here is Ray Mancini, four years off, no tune-up, and looking uh, to deliver a 12-round fight here, certainly uh, in line. And you got to give Ray Mancini credit. He has fought tough fights for being on four years. Not showing a lot of, of ring rust. Rodrigo Jam from uh, Hector Camacho. Mancini, though, going after him. I think he tried to open his feet. He stepped on his toe. With southpaws, it's easy to reach your left foot out and uh, catch their right toe. Look how close their front feet are together. Again, Camacho glances to his corner. But that's a little trick. If you can step on your opponent's toe and hit him at the same time, he'll visit the canvas. Mancini bullies Camacho in the corner. Al Albu with Sean O'Grady. And Michael Marley, who will be in the ring, talking to this two after the fight. Now, there it is. There's, there's the, the underneath the right rib that Mancini could have landed. His, right, his left arm was not tied up. Right there it is. As long as he's punching, referee Mills Lane will not separate the two. When he stops punching, Mills Lane steps in. The bursts of Macho Camacho showing around the left eye of Ray Mancini. And this crowd does not like the holding on tactics that Hector Camacho is, is using, but let's face it, the crowd's not going to hit you. Part of the fight game for Camacho. You can't be concerned with the crowd. Camacho is so focused right now. All the insults are gone. Right now, two fighters in the ring heading into the ninth round. Certainly with the respect for one another that they have not shown verbally. All those insults are gone because they got, both have mouthpieces in. They can't finally <laughs> found something to shut <laughs> Hector off, huh? Again, the short, quick burst by Camacho. Hector will have to wear that mouthpiece to the next press conference. Hector wants uh, this one over so he can finally eat a meal on a grapefruit diet. He's having eight grapefruits for breakfast. About 200 grapefruits the last couple of weeks. This will be his last fight as a junior welterweight. He wants to go up to the welterweight division. Nine rounds down. As the two fighters back into their corners. And we will eavesdrop. First Mancini. All right, how you feel? <laughs> All right. What I want you to do is. <laughs> what I want you to do is. Yeah, I am. Uh, what I want you to do is, like I said, I want you to get inside. When you're inside on this guy, rip him. Yeah. Rip him. On the outside, don't try to throw the long hook. Okay? Yeah. Not the long hook. But inside, then you rip him. All right? Yeah. Right hand, left hook. Just what we were talking about earlier in the round, get on the inside and rip him. So this is Hector Camacho. <laughs> He's telling him a straight one, two, and then get out. Rudy Mata in the ring telling Hector Camacho what to do. Well, Murphy Griffith in the ring, in the corner for Mancini. Get inside, rip away, but when you're outside, when you're throwing that long left hook, that's when Camacho is getting in for the short bursts. Mancini trying to track Camacho down here in the 10th. Camacho has gone 10 rounds or more on 10 occasions. Mancini has Camacho 10 rounds or more on 12 occasions. We're talking about two former champions who have seen it all in the ring. And it's a question now of a layoff. Has Mancini passed the test? Or can he feel 
The pressure of going on and on, fatigue-wise. I'm sure he, he feels the effects, but I'm sure he can also go on. He is, as I said earlier, in very good condition, obviously. Well documented, the career of Mancini. Everything on guts, tremendous heart, refuses to lose. And a big right hand by Mancini, but he did not follow it up. He's holding on as much right there as Hector Camacho. Now Camacho, what he's trying to do, he's talking to the referee right now. Talking about the head of, of, of uh, Ray Mancini. Quick grab it, says Mills Lane. Between rounds, Murphy Griffith in the corner of Ray Mancini told Mills Lane to make that guy quit holding. Only one common opponent for both these fighters, Jose Luis Ramirez. 12-round victories for both Camacho and Mancini against Ramirez. And Ramirez also a southpaw like Camacho is. Leads with the right jab. The best punch of the fight by Mancini. Just as he visualized, Camacho brought the left down, and Mancini popped the left hook. Camacho has sat down more in this round than earlier rounds. He's got to get back on his bicycle. He's holding on more. Referee Mills Lane is cautioning him for it. He could be showing these signs of the effects of a layoff from Ray Mancini. Popping in the right is Camacho. Mancini digging that body. Look at that shot. Now that hurt Camacho. Look at him lean over. He's, he's groaning in there. Mancini's got to go back to the well. Do what works. Dig that left uppercut once more. Final seconds of the 10th, 10 down, two to go. Here's a look at some of that action from that last round. The best shot from Mancini of, of this fight was that left hook. And he's holding on, look who's holding on there. Look, Mancini here, boom, and then watch Mancini grab Camacho. Look at him, he's grabbing him. They talked about Camacho grabbing. It takes two to hold on. His right hand, his left hand's free underneath the right hand of Hector Camacho. The best punch for Mancini, the most punches by Camacho. Round number 11, six minutes at the most to go. Every round, Ray Mancini has ran over to Hector Camacho's corner to meet him. This kid fights three minutes of every round. Camacho's got 12 rounds, five times. Mancini has done it four times. He's actually won 14 rounds on three occasions. The first fight against Brambo, against Arguello, and the tragic fight against Duke Kuk Kim, and a 15-rounder with Brambo. You heard the referee punch. Your hands are free, and that's what Mancini is doing. Again, Camacho trying to hold on. Camacho getting annoyed. Now, Mills Lane. Mills Lane. Camacho is complaining about the head of Ray Mancini. Mancini got a warning from it from referee Mills Lane. If there's an accidental headbutt and it stops the fight, it will go to the scorecard. As far as Sean O'Grady is concerned, that would help Camacho, who he feels is ahead. What Mancini is trying to do now is he's trying to put more pressure on Hector Camacho, trying to knock him out. He, he has, senses that he's behind. And he has two rounds to do it. And Mancini not close to the gas tank being empty. Great tribute in his comeback bid. He's in great condition, and he always was. Every fight for him, he's in great condition. He says this is a one-shot deal with Camacho. If he should be on the short end of this fight, he may still reevaluate whether he is back in the ring. Leonard. Hines, Duran, Foreman, Mancini. If anybody is showing the effects of a long time off, it's Hector Camacho. He's holding on. Look at him again, holding on. For good reason. He's done a good job. He has not lost concentration. 
Seemed to be a silly notion when they was, this was put together. But most of the boxing experts happy to see what is developing here tonight. They know too well what these two men mean to the, to the boxing game. Another important uh, thing, too, this is the 11th round. We're scheduled for 12. All the old-time trainers tell their fighters, hit it big that 12th round or that last round of the fight. Go out in style. Or put your foot out in style. So that may be what, what Camacho is doing. Seconds of round number 11. Mancini walks into one. 11 rounds down, one to go. The bragging rights to this fight. Corner of Camacho, they were telling him this is the last round. You've got to go out there and win this round. That's all you've got to do. Three minutes of boxing. Sean O'Grady sees Macho Camacho ahead. Michael Marley, who will be talking to the fighters after the fight has Camacho way ahead, eight rounds to three. Mancini, in the last three minutes, the consensus here, got to deliver the knockout blow. And it looks as though Hector Camacho knows that he may have this fight won. He's holding on, just trying to make it through this round. says Mills Lane. Good call. What happened, Hector Camacho was holding behind the head of Ray Mancini and then he hit him. Six years of hating one another. A positioning to finally be back or be in the ring face to face. And here we are in the 12th round. It did not happen four years ago when both of these fighters were at their peak. But they have certainly given a good show into the 12th and final round. Holding on, Hector Camacho. He throws a combination, ties up his opponent. There he is again. Final minute. You got it, Hector. Does Mancini have enough? Camacho stepping in, looking to his corner. And he senses that the battle is near. Hector Camacho does. 30 seconds left. The crowd will respond in the final seconds, down to 15. And again, every time the, the, the Hector Camacho's back hits the ropes, he ties up. There he is. And Hector! No win, Hector! Five seconds. And it is all said and done. Oh, that's great. They hug each other.
Hatred diffused. Respect after 12 rounds. And finally, Mancini and Camacho are in the books. Very close. Do you think they came to four years ago? Very close. I think it's the same fight only four years later. We have the decision. The drama unfolds as we go to our ring announcer, Mike Buffer. We have a split decision. Oh my! Keith McDonald scores the bout 116 to 112 for Boom Boom Mancini. Doug Tucker scores the bout 115 to 113 for Hector Camacho. And Chuck Jaffa scores the bout 115 to 113 for the winner. Hector Macho Camacho. I thought he was going to get caught up. I thought he was going to be worse than I was going to beat him. But it was closer than I, it wasn't as close as I thought it would be, but he fought a great fight. He knows. He knows. Hey, did you think you should have gotten the decision? Oh, absolutely. I feel that pressed the fight. It wasn't pretty, but I thought hey, I got the job done. Next time it'd be greater. Yeah. If he still ain't convinced. L like to do it again? We'll do it again. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. If the people, the people would pay to see it, I would love to do it. And the door swings wide open for Camacho Mancini 2. Well, it's a great fight the first time. Why wouldn't it be the second time? Hector Camacho, 35-0, the winner, the WBO junior welterweight champion. And in the books, it is his third world title. The entourage of Camacho celebrating.